Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. This is the second video on working out the electron configuration of atoms. In the last video we saw that different atomic orbitals have got different energies, and I'm showing you that here. We saw that there are three rules that we use to place electrons into the correct orbitals. Firstly, orbitals with the lowest energy are filled first. Secondly, we can have up to two electrons in the same orbital, but they must have opposite spins. And lastly, if we have orbitals with the same energy, then we put electrons into individual orbitals before we pair them. And that's because electrons in the same orbital repel. And we saw how to apply these rules for different elements. I'm showing you the orbitals for oxygen here. Oxygen has eight electrons. We also saw that we can write the electron configuration for atoms. Remember that the electron configuration shows subshells but not individual orbitals. The electron configuration of oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Now in this video, we're going to look at some more complicated examples. I'm showing you here a wider range of atomic orbitals. As you can see, I'm now showing the d subshell in shell 3. Remember that the d subshell contains 5 orbitals. Now if I bring in shell 4, you'll see something interesting. The energy of the 4s subshell is less than the energy of the 3d subshell. What that means is that we fill the 4s subshell before we start filling the 3d subshell. Let's look at an example. We're going to work out the orbitals for the element iron, which has 26 electrons. Remember that orbitals with the lowest energy are filled first. OK, so the first two electrons will go into the 1s subshell, and the second two will go into the 2s subshell. The next six electrons will go into the 2p subshell. We can then put two electrons into the 3s subshell, and then six into the 3p subshell. At this point, we've assigned 18 electrons, so we've got eight more to go. Now, as we've seen, the 4s orbital has a lower energy than the orbitals in the 3d subshell. This means that the next two electrons go into the 4s orbital like this. At this point, we've got six electrons left, so these can all go into the 3d subshell. The electron configuration of iron is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d6, 4s2. Now, this brings us to an important point. The electron configuration is always written in the order of the electron shells, not the order of filling. Coming up, I'll give you an example to try yourself. OK, I'd like you to draw the orbitals and write the electron configuration for the element vanadium. Vanadium has 23 electrons, so pause the video and try this yourself. As we said, vanadium has 23 electrons. The first two electrons go into the 1s subshell, and the second two go into the 2s subshell. The next six electrons go into the 2p subshell, and the next two go into the 3s subshell. We can now put six more electrons into the 3p subshell. This leaves us with five electrons to assign. Two electrons will go into the 4s subshell, and the remaining three go into the 3d subshell. The electron configuration of vanadium will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d3, 4s2. OK, so as you can see, assigning electrons into orbitals is fairly straightforward, but there are two exceptions that you need to learn. These are chromium and copper. I'd like you to work out the expected electron configurations of chromium and copper. Chromium has 24 electrons and copper has 29. So pause the video now and work this out. OK, I'm showing you here the expected electron configurations of chromium and copper. And here are the actual electron configurations. So as you can see, both chromium and copper do not follow the rules that we saw before. In both cases, the 4s subshell contains only one electron, even though there are electrons in the 3d subshell. Now, in order to explain this, we need to look at the 3d subshell. The 3d subshell is more stable when it's either half full or completely full. So in the case of chromium, by having only one electron in the 4s subshell, it can have a half full 3d subshell. And in the case of copper, by only having one electron in the 4s subshell, it can have a completely full 3d subshell. Now I should point out that there are more complicated explanations for chromium and copper, but this explanation is acceptable for A-level. In the next video, we're going to look at the link between electron configuration and the periodic table. 